So today is all about bacon, and I'm not gonna be doing the regular pork belly bacon. I'm gonna be doing three different alternative bacons that are absolutely fantastic. So let's get right into it. Here is our lineup for the alternative bacons we're gonna be making. This right here is the pork shoulder. This cut of meat is gonna be used to make something called buckboard bacon. I've never tried it before, never made it before, but I'm super excited to give this a shot. Now this is a bone-in pork butt. I don't know if you can do bacon with the bone in. I'm sure you can, I don't want to. So my plan here is I'm going to cut this in half and use the boneless half to make the buckboard bacon. Then I'll go ahead and just cook that bone in half for some pulled pork or something. Now let's move on to the next cut of meat. And this is probably the bacon that you've seen the most as an alternative bacon. This is a pork loin and we're going to be making Canadian bacon out of this. That's where the Canadian bacon is, it's the pork loin. It's really fantastic stuff. I have done it before and I was super happy with the results. Now the last cut, you may not know what this is. I have cooked this on my channel before. What this is, is pork jowl. Now, if you haven't seen the pork jowl video, make sure to go check it out because this stuff came out so good. Traditionally, pork jowl is always cured and that's how it's used. I cooked it fresh like this and the results were fantastic. So once again, be sure to check out that video. So when pork jowl is cured and made into bacon, it's mainly an Italian meat and what they call it is guanciale. So guanciale is either the cheek or the jowl of the pig cured and then turned into bacon and they use it in a lot of their recipes, very similar to a pancetta, but with the pork jowl. So I'm excited to give this one a try. So we're gonna have our buckboard bacon, our Canadian bacon, and our guanciale. So the first thing I wanna do is get this pork butt cut up, then we can make our curing brine, get these all packaged up, and we'll let them cure. All right, so here's our pork butt. Now, if you're familiar with the pork butt, you know you're gonna have your blade bone over here, and then you're gonna have the joint end of the bone right here. So if you've cooked enough pork butt, you know that the bone runs along this corner here. So all this meat over here is boneless, and this is what we want for that buckboard bacon. Now this is also known as the money muscle, so this is gonna be some of the best meat, so it's gonna make some awesome bacon. But first I wanna go ahead and cut any of these little scraps off here. Got one here. So basically I'm gonna start at the corner of this bone here, and then I'm gonna cut diagonally Try and get right around that bone if I can. So, let's see if I can do this. Not too bad, there we go. So here we have a completely boneless piece of pork butt that is going to make us some delicious buckboard bacon. Perfect, you can trim down some of this fat if you want. Again, it's bacon so you do want some fat on there. Let's do a little trim like that. This looks pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and make our cure and we'll get these things sealed up. All right, so this is a recipe loosely based off of a bacon recipe from Guga Foods. I like this recipe because of how simple it is and the results are always fantastic. So I'm gonna start off with about a cup of kosher salt, then a cup of brown sugar. Then you're gonna want some pink curing salt and this is number one curing salt, Prague powder. You're gonna want about a teaspoon. Then you're gonna want some maple syrup, maybe a half a cup to a cup. Then I like to go in with some Worcestershire sauce, not too much, maybe a tablespoon or so. And then about a tablespoon or so of some apple whiskey. Then just go ahead and mix this up. And that is it, this smells fantastic. I get a lot of that apple whiskey smell. This is gonna make some awesome bacon. So let's get the meat covered in our cure and we'll get it all wrapped up. So get a vacuum seal bag. We're gonna start with this pork butt. Get that in there. Now go ahead and just pour some of this cure into the bag. So you got the cure in there, then just go ahead and reach in, kinda spin this around. Try and get it totally coated in that cure. You can rub the cure on the outside first, then try and get it in the bag. I find that kind of makes a mess. I like to just put it right in the bag and then kind of just rub this cure all over this. Once it gets vacuum sealed, it should get coated nicely. That looks pretty good to me. So let's get the buckboard out of here. Next one, pork loin. 
pour that in the bag. And just try and cover this whole thing with the cure. And if you wanted to do this with pork belly, you just follow this exact recipe, but then just throw a pork belly in there and you have some regular bacon. So that looks pretty good. Canadian bacon, done. Now for my favorite one to try. Throw in this pork gel. Now you could probably do two separate bags for the pork gel. I'm gonna try and do them both in one. Just make sure they're not stacked on top of each other. And then just get the rest of that cure in there. Get that pork gel covered up. Spin them around a couple times. Get everything coated. And there we go. Let's get these vacuum sealed. All right, there's our three bacons, pork butt, pork loin, pork jowl. Now the next step you're gonna have to do with these, throw these in your fridge for about seven days. You can go longer, especially with the pork butt. You can probably go a little shorter with the pork jowl because it all depends on how thick the cut of meat is. And then the Canadian bacon's right in the middle. So this is a perfect seven dayer for the Canadian bacon. Seven days will be plenty for the pork jowl. You might want to go a little longer on the buckboard just because it's a large piece of meat. So throw these in your fridge and every day, maybe twice a day, go ahead and just mix this around. And you can do that right after you vacuum seal them. Just redistribute all the salt and everything in there. Make sure everything's covered nicely. You're gonna notice pretty quickly that it's gonna to start to pull some moisture out of this meat and the bag is gonna have a lot more liquid in it than it did before. It's gonna make it a lot easier to mix up. But that's that, throw them in your fridge, mix them up once or twice a day and let them sit in there for at least seven days. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll see you guys in about a week to get these things out and then we'll get them smoked. All right, so it's been one week on this bacon and you can already see how much this has changed in color. Check that out. See how much more red this meat is. This is what happens when you do the cure. Your meat's gonna get super red like this. And if you feel it, it's extremely tough, not nearly as soft as it used to be. Now, all that's left to do is to get these things smoked. And to cook these, you wanna run your smoker at around 180 degrees. You don't wanna go any hotter than that. You're just trying to get a nice smoke flavor on these. And for temperature, we're looking to bring these up just to 160 degrees, so they will be fully cooked. What I did was take them out of that vacuum sealed bag, and you'll notice that there's a lot of liquid in there. That's what's gonna happen. It draws a lot of moisture out of this meat dump it out, take these pieces out, rinse them thoroughly under the sink with water, get all that extra stuff off the outside. You're not gonna want that, it's just gonna make it even more salty. Then what you can do is take these pieces and put them into bowls of water and let them soak there for an hour or two. I let these soak probably for only about 30 minutes, but a couple hours would really help pull some more of that saltiness out of there. That being said, I'm gonna be using my pellet smoker today because I can easily set it to 180 degrees and it will stay there constantly. I was thinking about using my offset smoker, which would give me a much better smoke flavor, but the problem with that is it's very difficult to maintain such a low temperature on that smoker and I was a little concerned about temperature spikes because I didn't want these things to see high heat. The reason you don't want too high of a temperature is because you don't want this fat to start to render. You want these to slowly cook but you don't want any of this fat to render. So that's my plan. Let's go out to the smoker and get these on. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this buckboard bacon down on the bottom here. Then up top, the Canadian bacon and the guanciale. And I forgot to mention, you wanna go fat side up. All right, so we'll let these things smoke. All right, so the bacon is finished. After about five hours, the pork gel was finished. It reached 160 degrees, then I pulled it off. At the eight hour mark, both the Canadian bacon, pork loin, and the buckboard pork butt bacon had reached 160 degrees, so I went and pulled those off. After that, I let them rest for a while to cool down. Then what I did was I vacuum sealed them into these bags to make sure that they were nice and tight. Then I put them in my fridge and let them sit there for a couple days. 
You want to let these go for at least a day just to get nice and firm in this vacuum bag. But if you don't want to do that, you can go ahead, cool your bacon off, put it in the fridge for a little bit, and it's ready to go immediately. You could actually cook it right hot off the smoker, but you really want to let it cool down. So this stuff is done. Let's get them out of the bag, sliced up, and see how this bacon came out. All right, so let's get this bacon opened up. Start with our buckboard bacon. Smells very nice. All right, go ahead and check that out. If you could smell it, it smells amazing. You can really smell the apple whiskey, actually. This is going to be very good. And you can see it's nice and dense, really tight. That's what the vacuum sealing and letting it rest for a while will do. Let's get this Guinchali opened up. And there you go, it's our Guinchali. I have a feeling this stuff's gonna be really, really good. And you can see it's nice and firm now. And then last, we have our Canadian bacon. This is one of my favorite bacons to do, just because pork loin is so cheap. And this is the perfect bacon to use for a BLT. You got nice round slices, they go on a sandwich perfectly. Go ahead, check that out. Does that not look good or what? You can see. This thing is really stiff. Let's go ahead, get some of these sliced up, and we'll start with the buckboard bacon. And I think I wanna slice it like that, because you got your money muscle over here, so I want each piece to have some of that. So first, you're gonna wanna square this up. And look at that. Now save this, cut it up, make some bacon bits out of it. That's what you wanna do with the end piece. But take a look at this buckboard bacon. Man, does that look good or what? So let's go ahead and get some slices out of here. And now this is my favorite part about doing homemade bacon. You can go as thick or as thin as you want. If you have a deli slicer, that's probably your best option for this. But if you're just patient, you can get some nice slices off of here. I'm trying to just get some really thin slices. All right, there is our buckboard bacon. Take a look at that. So I've never tried this stuff before, but I could see why it would be so good. It's reminding me a lot of ham. That is our buckboard. Let's get that out of the way. Now, slice up this Canadian bacon. And obviously you're just gonna cut it this way. Start on this end, square it up. And check that out. Some nice Canadian bacon right there. Let's get some slices. And this is usually better cut a little thicker. And there's our Canadian bacon. Check that out. See this came out really nice. Again, one of my favorite kinds of bacon to do. Like I said, pork loin is so cheap. You can make a ton of delicious bacon just with that pork loin. Now this one I'm looking forward to the most probably is the guanciale, the pork jowl. So I'm not really sure the best way to slice this up. I think I'm just gonna go ahead, just slice it just like that. So let's see if we can get some slices off here. Oh, yes. Very fatty. Cuts really nice. Check that out. So this looks the most like a normal piece of bacon. I bet you this stuff is going to be so good. Look at, you got a nice fat cap on there. Then you got this nice meat. This is fantastic looking. So that's the alternate bacon here. You got your buckboard, Canadian, Guinchali, and they all look fantastic. So you don't have to always just make bacon with pork belly. And the way that the price of pork bellies have been, you might wanna go with one of these options anyway. I know pork chow is difficult to find. If you're looking for it, check out Porter Road. And if you want a discount on your first order, I can put a link down below for you, so go check that out. I'll also put a link to everything I like to use in my videos down there as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe right over here. And if you wanna see another one of my barbecue videos, you can check this one out right over here. But thanks for watching, guys. And most importantly, get out there and smoke something good.